Hi, welcome to the RPB Resonance Chemistry. Now I continued my lectures on valence bond theory. Today our topic is outer orbital complexes. Now I will take the some of the examples. We solve the examples in simple and trick manner. So the, let us take the first example. Chromium NH3 6 times plus 2. That means here chromium oxidation state is plus 2. Chromium present at the plus 2 oxidation state. Now chromium configuration is 3D5 and 4S1. 3D5 and 4S1. Here chromium plus 2 means the loss of two electrons, one electron loss from the 4s orbital, one electron loss from the 3d orbital. Then configuration is 3d4, 3d4, 4s0, 4p0, etc. Now we have 3d orbital having the four electrons. So whenever the, uh, the presence of strong field ligands, electron pair up takes place. The presence of weak field ligands, the electrons uh, follows the Huns rule. Huns rule means uh, after of field the configuration, electron pair up takes place. Uh, electron pairing takes place. Now here there is no strong field ligand. That's why electron filling method follows Huns rule. Now we have four electrons filled like this. Now 4s orbital empty, 4p orbital empty. Now we have the six ligands. That's why. It requires the six orbitals. Okay. Now here one electron which is a non not degenerate orbital, not degenerate orbital. So the degeneracy of d orbitals uh, we will discuss it in crystal field theory. That's why the electron enters into s orbital, did not enters into n minus one d orbital. Now we required six electron six uh, ligands. We have the six ligands. That's why we required six orbitals. That's why d two sorry. Sp3 D2, Sp3 D2. Now here hybridization can start with the NS orbital. Hybridization start with NS orbital. Then those complexes are called outer orbital complexes. So now here hybridization is in Sp3 D2. Shape is octahedral, which is belongs to the outer orbital complexes. Now according to uh, magnetic momentum conditions, according to magnetic momentum experimental conditions, it shows that it is a paramagnetic species. That's why we take the number of uh, unpaired electrons is 4. Now the magnetic momentum with the help of spin only form formula. So magnetic momentum is 4.9. Magnetic momentum is 4.9. So the 4.9 bar Bohr magneton, it is a paramagnetic species. It is a paramagnetic species. Now let us discuss second example. Now second one. F E F6 minus 3. So these three examples are came from uh, D5 configuration only. Now here Fe plus 3 oxidation state, Fe having the 4s2 3d6 configuration. 4s2 3d6 configuration. Fe plus 3 means it loss of the 3 electron, 2 from the 4s orbital, 1 from the 3d orbital, then it is a 3d5 configuration, of a fluid configuration, 3d5 of fluid configuration, then it is 4s, 4p, 4, 4d like that. It having the 4, 5 electrons. These five electrons uh, are completely half filled. Completely half filled. Then after it having this, it requires the six orbitals due to our coordination number is a six. That's why we require the six orbital. Then these six orbital hybridize together. Then it forms the sp three d two hybridization. Then shape is octahedral OOC complex. Why? Because the hybridizations can start with the highest uh, principal quantum number s orbital. That means n s orbital. So now, the mag according to magnetic momentum calculations, the number of unpaired electrons is equal to 5. Mu is equal to approximately equal to the 6. That is nothing but 5.9 Bohr magneton. Then mu is not equal to the 0. That's why it is paramagnetic species. That's why it is paramagnetic species. Now the third example is cobalt F6 minus 3. Cobalt F6 minus 3. Here cobalt oxidation state is plus 3. Cobalt configuration is 3D7 4S2. Here cobalt plus 3 means loss of 3 electrons. 2 from the 4S orbital, 1 from the 3D orbital. Then it is 3D6. Here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5th. Now the 6th one, there is no forceful interaction to pair up the electron. That's why those are called weak field ligands. So now here 6 electrons paired like this. 4S, 4P, 4D orbitals are vacant. Now here sp3 d2 sp3 d2 hybridization shape is octahedral OOC. Now the number of unpaired electrons 1, 2, 3, 4. So number of unpaired electrons are 4. Then magnetic momentum is equal to 4.9. So then paramagnetic species. Paramagnetic species. Now fourth example. Cobalt 
cobalt NH3 6 times plus 2. Here cobalt oxidation state is 4S2 3D7. Cobalt plus 2 means 3D7 configuration. 3D7 configuration. It having the 7 electrons. So 4S is vacant, 4P is vacant. Now 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. So it having only 3 unpaid electrons. Hybridization is 4S, 4P, 4D. 4S, 4P, 4D. S, P, 3, D2. Due to this, it having the 6 electrons. That's why we require the 6 orbitals. 6 ligands there. 6, uh, six uh, orbitals are required. That's why those 6 orbitals can participate in the SP3, D2 hybridization. Can use the 6 uh, SP3, D2 hybrid orbitals. Now here, shape is octahedral OOC complex only. Now, the magnetic momentum calculation tells about n is equal to 3, mu is equal to 3.9. It is paramagnetic species. It is paramagnetic species. Now, the fifth one is very, very important one. The fifth one is blue ring test complex, which is nothing but a blue ring test complexes. Now, here plus 2. Now, let us calculate once again. It is the oxidation state of metal. X plus, here 5 only, not the 6. 5 into 0 plus nitrosyl ligand existed in plus 1 oxidation state here according to magnetic momentum calculation we know the NO oxidation state which is nothing but plus 1 so plus 1 is equal to plus 2 that means x is equal to plus 1 is equal to plus 2 then x is equal to 2 minus 1 x is equal to plus 1 oxidation state so iron configuration is 3d6 for s2 here iron plus 1 means only one electron is present at 4s orbital only one electron present at 4s orbital. Now here 3d6 4s1, 3d, 3d6 4s1. That means here one electron, two electron, three electron, fourth electron, fifth electron, sixth electron. Now the seventh electron, where which is present at the 4s orbital, which is present at the 4s orbital. Now here. Yeah, no, nitrosyl ligand, it having the, it, it, it is the strong field ligand, and nitrosyl ligand is nothing but a strong field ligand, it having the little bit pairing capability, it having the little bit pairing capability, due to here five, uh, five ligands are weak field, only one ligand is a strong field, that's why the complex having the little bit of pairing energy, so that pairing electron takes place at a second orbital, then it forms. So, the little bit pairing energy can move the 4s electron into 3d orbital, then pairing takes place like this. So, this is the as usual electron, the seventh electron comes over here, then it forms sp3d to hybridization. Be careful about a uh, blue ring test complex, here oxidation state is plus 1. Now the hybridization is sp3d2, even though it is sp3d2 hybridization, so number of unpaired electrons are 3, number of unpaired electrons are 3, then magnetic momentum is equal to 3.89 board magneton, then our species is paramagnetic, our species is paramagnetic. Now the final one is, now the final one is, Ni H2O 6 times plus 2. That means uh, here nickel configuration is 4s2 3d8 then nickel plus 2 oxidation state it existed as a 3d8 only 3d8 only now here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 4s orbital vacant 4p orbital vacant 4d orbital are vacant now here 4d orbitals are vacant orbitals so we have the six ligands that's why those six ligands can participate in the six vacant orbital of metal then it gives the sp3d2 hybridization sp3d2 hybridization here sp3d2 hybridization the shape is octahedral which is outer orbital complexes which is involves the outer orbital complexes here number of unpaired electrons are 2 n is equal to 2 then magnetic momentum is equal to 2.828 Bohr magneton then it is a paramagnetic species then it is paramagnetic species so let us conclude what about the octahedral complexes in case of a strong field and a weak field again I will give the, a simple trick about uh, these valency bond now I will give the trick about uh, outer orbital and inner orbital complexes. So generally, I will give the small graph. So, which is uh, IOC complexes, which is OOC complexes. So generally, D1, D2, D3 configurations, whether it is a strong field ligands, 
strong field gains or weak field gains it favors only inner orbital complexes those are the inner orbital complexes but in case of d8 d9 d10 configurations d8 d9 d10 configurations whether it is a strong field or weak field these are also outer orbital complexes these are outer orbital these are inner orbital but exceptionally d4 d5 d6 d7 in case of uh, strong field gains it act as ioc complexes in case of uh, weak field gains it act as ooc complexes so this is very useful and uh, very uh, easily remembering trick now we discussed about uh, tetrahedral complexes so we saw the balancing bond theory applications on the tetrahedral complexes how they are tetrahedral complexes we discussed the a uh, very simple manner mn cl4 minus 2 that means here mn existed in plus 2 oxidation state the manganese configuration is 4s2 3d5 here mn plus 2 means the loss of two electrons then it gives 3d5 electrons 3d5 electrons the uh, five orbitals if we have the five orbit five electrons that means each electron paid a single one uh, due to the weak field ligand uh, due to the weak field ligand now it having one s orbital 3p orbital then it is sp3 hybridization now shape is a tetrahedral sp3 means the shape is a tetrahedral by using the uh, previous table and i will give the link about a uh, previous to previous topic now number of unpaired electrons are five then ma magnetic momentum is equal to 5.9 bohr magneton then it is paramagnetic stresses now what about the second example is FeCl4 minus 2 that means Fe configuration is 4s2 3d6 now Fe plus 2 means here loss of two electrons then it is a 3d6 configuration this is a 3d6 configuration 1 2 3 4 5 now the sixth electron paid up the sixth electron pairing takes place now here one s orbital another three are vacant orbital now hybridization is sp3 shape is tetrahedral n is equal to 4 mu is equal to 4.9 bore magneton then it is paramagnetic species also it is also a paramagnetic species the magnetic mobile the magnetic measurements will give the information about uh, the pa paramagnetic species of the complexes now let us discuss a uh, third and fourth examples third example is cobalt cl4 minus 2 here cobalt configuration is 4s2 3d7 now cobalt oxidation state is plus 2 that means 3d7 configuration the seven electron pairs like this 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 so it having the weak field that's why it follows the hund's rule otherwise it it does not follows the hund's rule the, then again it it takes place like a pairing now here all the complexes it, it does not having the pairing so due to the all are weak field ligand exceptionally one or two cases are there i will tell those uh, exceptional cases now here s orbital p orbital now hybridization is sp3 shape is a tetrahedral shape is a tetrahedral n is equal to 3 mu is equal to 3.89 then it is a paramagnetic species then it is paramagnetic species now the fourth example is nickel cl4 minus 2 here that means uh, nickel existed in plus 2 oxidation state the configuration of nickel is 4s2 3d8 nickel plus 2 means 3d8 configuration plus 2 means 3d8 configuration now that is a 3d8 configuration filling like this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and 7, 8. Uh, now, here only two unpaired electrons are present. So, it having the four orbitals, then how we, we have the four ligands, that's why we required four orbitals. Those are the sp3 orbital. n is equal to 2, then mu is equal to 2.828. Then it is paramagnetic. Hybridization is sp3. Then shape is tetrahedral. Then shape is tetrahedral molecule. Now, what about the fifth one? The fifth and the sixth examples are fifth one is copper chloride minus two that means here copper 4s1 3d10 here copper plus two means 3d9 configuration 3d9 configuration it having the nine electrons and nine electrons paired like this by using the huns paulis uh, uh, as well as half bow principle now here n is equal to one then mu is equal to 1.732 bower magneton then it is paramagnetic species now 4s 4p orbitals are vacant now it have we have the four ligands that's why those four ligands can can undergo the sp3 hybridization then it gives a 4 sp3 hybrid orbital so hybridization is sp3 then shape is a tetrahedral then shape is a tetrahedral now then nickel c co4 times so it is some exceptional case i'll 
we will discuss the very clearly now nickel co4 times that means uh, nickel having the configuration for s2 3d10 so here oxidation state is zero that means 3d 3d8 sorry 3d8 and 4s2 so i did a mistake so uh, please rewrite a 4s2 3d8 configuration is nickel so now here 3d8 as well as 4s2 3d8 configuration that means uh, our assumption like this 1 2, 3, 4, 5, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 4S having the two electrons. So now the presence of ligand is carbonyl. The presence of ligand is carbonyl. Carbonyl having the largest uh, uh, pairing capacity. So then the complex having the uh, four strong field ligands so that's why it having the more pairing energy so the pairing energy will help the pair up of the 4s electron into 3d orbital 4s electrons into 3d orbital then it rearranges to like this so one two three four five so these two electrons also pair up so first one here paired now second one like this so then s orbital p orbital we have the four orbital those those orbitals are sp3 hybridization sp3 hybridization now here n is equal to 0, mu is equal to 0, then it is a diamagnetic species. So even though it is a tetrahedral complex, it is a diamagnetic species. Now let us discuss the two anomalous um, hybridization. Those are the SD3 hybridization. SD3 hybridization. Now, so the first one is KMNO4. That is, first one is KMNO4. In the KMNO4 complexes, it, it is nothing but MNO4 minus. That means uh, Mn is x plus 4 into minus 2 is equal to minus 1. x minus 8 is equal to minus 1. x is equal to plus 7 oxidation state. x is equal to plus 7 oxidation state. That means uh, here the Mn configuration is uh, 4s2, 3d5. Now Mn plus 7 means here loss of all the electrons. Then it becomes a D0 configuration. Then it becomes a D0 configuration. So according to the higher, uh, higher energy, 4s, 3d like this. The energy orbital, the electron filling method is like this. So here 4s, here 3d. So manganese having the four oxygen ligands. Those four oxygen ligands can coordinate the bond with uh, 4s and 3d orbitals. So one is uh, s remaining 3 or d orbital then the hybridization is sd3 so manganese kmno4 manganese hybridization is sd3 so here hybridization is sd3 so those those d orbitals are dxy dyz djx dxy dyz djx please remember it it is very useful so here it having the d0 then it is n is equal to 0 mu is equal to 0 it is diamagnetic species it is diamagnetic species so please remember one point now here even though it having the there is no lone pair of electrons but it's shown very purple thick color purple color so uh, according to dd transition there is no electron in the d orbital so the, those complexes could not able to show the, the show their color so even though it having d0 configuration it shown the color due to the charge transfer spectrum due to the charge transfer spectra. We discussed the charge transfer, uh, transfer spectra in further classes. Now let us discuss the another, another formula. The final example about a uh, tetrahedral complex is K2Cr2O7. Here Cr2O7, that means uh, chromium oxidation state is plus 6. Now configuration of chromium is S1D5. Here chromium oxidation state plus 6 means uh, here it having the D0 configuration, it having the D0 configuration. So two chromium ions are having, uh, having the complexes. Then these are two, two chromium ions are like this. So this is the D orbital. This is the D orbital. So this is 4S and 3D. Here 4S and 3D. So we have the seven ligands which are coordinated with like a tetrahedral manner. One ligand can coordinate uh, those two metals so one ligand can coordinate with those two metals that is like a bridged manner that is like a bridged manner so this this ligand can coordinate with uh, the, both, both the metals that's why it acts as a bridge ligand so the remaining are same so the remaining are same so one bond two bond three bonds so these four are nothing but 
SD3 hybridization. So KMnO4, K2Cr2O7, those are the SD3 hybridization. There is no unpaired electron, that means N is equal to 0, mu is equal to 0, then it is a diamagnetic species. So KMnO4 color is purple. So K2Cr2O7 color is, uh, I think, uh, orange red. Uh, red orange, like orange color. So this is the tetrahedral complexes. Now, we exercise the, some of the problems regarding to the square planar complexes. So, these are the square planar complexes. How they, how they are the square planar complexes according to the polling explanation. Now, the first one is nickel CN4 minus 2. Here, oxidation state is plus 2. Here, nickel configuration is 3D8 4S2. That means nickel plus 2 means you have 3D8. So, 3D8 means it having the 8 electrons. So, those 8 electrons uh, with the help of strong field ligands, uh, they can pair up. They can pair up. That means uh, all the ligands can pair. So, here 8 electrons. Now, S, P. So, we have the 4 ligands. Uh, those 4 ligands are required to fulfill the coordinate bond with the metal atom. So, it requires a 4 bond, 4 orbitals. So, those 4 are these. So, D, S, P, 2. Dsp2. Here it participated n minus 1d orbital. That's why it is inner orbital complexes. That's why it is inner orbital complexes. Here there is no unpaired electrons. So it is an n is equal to 0, mu is equal to 0, then it is a diamagnetic species. So Dsp2 means that's uh, with the help of uh, predicting table, Dsp2 means shape is nothing but a square planar complex. Which complex? Square planar complex. Second example. Copper in H3. 4 times plus 2. Here it is present as a cupramonium salt. So the cyan present in cupramonium salt. So copper configuration is 4s1, 3d10. Here copper present in plus 2 oxidation state. That's why 3d9 configuration. So according to our VBT explanation, so those 9 electrons filled like a Hunt's manner. Why? Because it is a weak field ligand. Then it forms the Hunt's manner. It undergoes the hybridization is sp3. SP3 hybridization. But according to spectral studies, ESR and X-ray spectral studies, so the complex is square planar. So this spectral studies will give the information about the regarding complex, which is a square planar complexes. But uh, well, valency bond theory assumption it is SP3. So then it is uh, again assumes that like this 1, 2, 3, 4. 5, 6, 7, 8, this 9th electron can jump to the 4p orbital, can jump to the 4p orbital. So then our hybridization is sp, dsp2, dsp2. But uh, this, this, orbit, this electron present at the 4pz hybrid, 4pz orbital, 4pz orbital, 4pz orbital is higher energy orbital. So generally, general assumption is higher orbitals can easily lose their electron, can easily lose their electrons. So according to experimental condition, cupramonium salt here plus 2 cannot lose their electron easily, cannot lose their electron easily. So this experiment is not possible here, it is oxidized reaction. So according to the experimental condition, Cupramonium salt cannot oxidize easily. So again, it is the another problem. That's why Huggins suggests that Huggins suggests that the hybridization of the complexes like this. So the ninth electron present at 3D orbital only. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. But uh, the hybridization is the hybridization is 1s orbital, 2p orbital, 1d orbital, 1s orbital, 2p orbital, 1d orbital. So that 4pz orbital can vacant like that only. So now hybridization is sp2 dehybridization, sp2 dehybridization. This d orbital is dx square y square. So maybe question came like this. So this d orbital is nothing but dx square y square. sp2 d also a square planar complexes, a square planar complexes. Now, let us go with the uh, remaining examples. So, be careful about the copper plus 2 configuration. Copper plus 2 can use the sp2 dehybridization, does not give the dsp2 hybridization.
Now, the third example, palladium Cl4-2. The palladium came from the nickel group, nickel, palladium, platinum. That means uh, here 3S, 4S2, 3D8. Here, palladium means 5S2, 3D8. 5S2, 3D8 is palladium configuration. Now, palladium existed in plus 2 oxidation state. That means 3D8 configuration. So, 3D8 configuration. It having the, some different... Uh, uh, electronic configuration we discussed uh, let us a simple manner 3d8 configuration so 3d8 means so here generally uh, chlorine is a weak field again chlorine is a weak field again like uh, it it follows like this six seven eight but uh, magnetic measurement gives the information about uh, this is the square planar complex as well as uh, diamagnetic complexes so that's why Again, we assume that an exception in case of a 4D and 5D series, 4D and 5D series, every ligand act as strong field. So that's why star pairing takes place from start to starting, from starting onwards. Now here, this is the hybridization SD, SP2, it is a square planar, N is equal to 0, mu is equal to 0. So this is a, a diamagnetic species, a diamagnetic species. So here palladium plus 2 like that only, platinum plus 2 like that only, platinum ammonia like that only. So here platinum means 6S2, 4D8. So, so now here it is 4D, just uh, correct it. Here palladium means 5S2, 4D8. Platinum means 6S2, 5D8. Platinum means 6S2, 5D8. Here 4D and 5D cases, every ligand act as a strong field ligand, which is also discussed over there, where it is nothing but a spectrochemical series. Spectrochemical series. So these are the examples about uh, like uh, inner orbital complexes, outer orbital complexes from octahedral complexes, again tetrahedral as well as square planar complexes. Now, now, we discussed about uh, limitations uh, of the valence bond theory. So, uh, it having the several limitations, we discussed a few of them. So, it, it could not explain the nature of ligand, whether it is a strong field or weak field. It could not explain the nature of ligand. That means whether it is a strong field or weak field. Again, uh, uh, why the electron pairing takes place at in the, in the case of strong field ligands? It is also second drawback in case of uh, strong field ligands. Again, it does not uh, it does not explain the color of the complexes, color of the complexes. That's why it is also in a main drawback of the valence bond theory. Now, the fourth one is it it does not explain the electronic spectra of the complexes, electronic spectra of the complexes. The fifth one is it could not be able to explain the copper NH three four times plus two complexes. That is nothing but cuprum. It was suggested by the Huggins. It was suggested by the Huggins. Now, again, it, it does not able to uh, uh, explain the distortion of octahedral complexes like uh, co copper H2O 6 times plus 2 or chromium H2O 6, ta four, uh, 6 times plus 2 like that. Uh, so, it was explained by the gentle distortion. Now, the, it, it, it could not able to explain the variation in magnetic momentum. Some of the complexes, it shown very high magnetic momentum in experimental level over than the calculational magnetic momentum. Again, it does not explain the uh, variation in a different uh, different temperature magnetic momentum like low temperature what will happen high temperature what will happen now the eighth one is final one it, it could not able to explain the reaction rates like either it is sn1 reaction or sn2 reaction or labile or inert complexes so again it could not able to explain the mechanism so these are the uh, drawbacks of valence bond theory these drawbacks are helpful to develop the crystal field theory no, thank you for watching.